Today, I am going to be explaining why you sometimes see dollar signs like this in formulas in Excel and why it's one of the most important concepts in spreadsheets to understand. Hiya folks, welcome back to the Small Business Toolbox. I'm Andy Mack and I've been self-employed for a long, long time. And in this little series of videos, I'm going to be just explaining some of the fundamental concepts of using spreadsheets. I'm going to be showing you it in Microsoft Excel, but the same rules apply to pretty much every spreadsheet package that's out there, as far as I'm aware. And today I'm going to be explaining what absolute formula references are. So last time we had a very quick look at how to put together very basic formulas in Excel. And we talked about how you can refer to different cells in your spreadsheet just from the column reference and the row reference. So for example, here we're referring to column J, row three, which would be uh, this one over here on the right. But what you'll sometimes see in Excel is a dollar sign in front of your formula reference. So you sometimes see something like this. And if you've ever seen that in formulas and you're wondering what on earth is going on, it's nothing to do with currencies. What we're doing is we're making an absolute cell reference. And we're doing that through the use of dollar signs before the column reference and before the row reference. And that's what today's video is all going to be about. You're going to be using the dollar sign in formulas all the time in Excel. It, as I say, it's a really important concept that you get your head around. And if you're not doing it, you're probably working in a really kind of inefficient way. So understanding why you need to make absolute cell references is fairly important. I've knocked together this very, very quick spreadsheet here. It's just a basic kind of thing that you might get in an invoice template or something like that. What I'll do first of all, before I start talking about this, I'll just time lapse through me building this and then you can understand how we got to this starting point. Right, so this is a fairly typical kind of invoice template that you might make in Excel. Actually, I'm gonna change this very slightly. So I've got a gross total at the end here. You wouldn't normally show a line by line gross total. It kind of depends. If you're dealing with consumers, then, then maybe you would. But if it's business to business, you probably wouldn't show a, a line level gross total. I'm gonna change the VAT column to be VAT rate. And then I'm gonna make the column next to it to be the VAT figure. That's a bit more, bit more realistic. There we go. So let's say that you sell custom printed t-shirts or something like that. So I'm just gonna put in here, custom printed t-shirt. Unit price, let's say you sell them at five pounds each and you've sold 50 of them. So with the subtotal is 50 times five. You can see in the formula there equals C3 times D3. And then we're gonna apply a VAT rate of 20%. So the formula at the end there is the subtotal times the VAT rate to get the amount of VAT. And then we might have another line that says a design charge of 200 pounds, one of them. All I'm gonna do, we're gonna copy these formulas down. If you remember from last time, to copy them down, all you need to do is click on the little plus on the bottom of the formula box there. If I just copy those and copy those down like that, and you can see an interesting thing's happened here. So first of all, it's copied this formula absolutely fine. Let me just drag that down a bit further. Let's add a few more lines in so you can see what's happening here. Um, we'll add delivery. 
So these formulas have all updated themselves automatically, copied themselves down. Same on the VAT formulas as well. But you can see what's happened to the VAT rate here. Well, the VAT rate has automatically incremented itself. And Excel has a habit of doing this. If Excel can save you time by kind of second guessing what you're trying to do, it, it will do that. I mean, for example, if you put one, two in a column and then you select those top two cells and drag down, Look, it's automatically incremented the numbers. It'll not, not do that if you just select uh, one. If you do one cell and copy down, it'll just copy that cell. But because we've done those two, it's second guessing that we want to increment the number. Excel's generally very good at that, but sometimes you don't want it to do that. In this situation, we don't want the bat rate to increase by 100% every time we go to a new row. This should be 20% and that should be 20%. So an easy way around that is that we put the VAT rate somewhere and we make reference to that VAT rate. So just for the sake of argument, I'm going to put the VAT rate over here in cell J3. So I'm just going to, let's make this a bit smaller so it wouldn't actually fit this in. So let's pop the VAT rate in there. And you can put it anywhere. You could put it on a different sheet. As long as you're not going to print it, and we'll cover off having print areas so you only print the stuff that you want to print, and then you can exclude stuff on the sheet that you don't want to print. We'll cover that in a future episode. But I'm just going to pop the VAT rate over here. I'll even put a little thing above it so we remember. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to refer to that from this cell. So equals that equals J3. So now, let me just delete all of this out. Now, what do you think is going to happen when we copy this down? Let me show you. Ah, it hasn't worked. Why have we got a zero in these two cells? It should be referring to cell J3. Well, coming back to my point that Excel will always try and second guess what you're trying to do. It knows that you want to increment each of these formulas. In this row, everything should be referring to row three, which it does. In this row, it should be referring to row four, which it does. And Excel's done that automatically by itself. Well, what do you think's happened here? Well, exactly the same. Look, it's changed it to refer to cell J4. In this one, it's now referring to J5. And there's nothing in J4 or J5. I mean, you could put the VAT rate there and there. Now, why has that happened? That's because this isn't set up as a percentage cell at the minute. So in, if you did want to do it that way, it's a really bad way of doing it, by the way, uh, you would need to change it to a percentage format first. You can see now it's jumped up to 2000% because that's what a 20 would be. 0.2 is obviously decimal for 20%. So now that we've changed it to percent format. So you could do that. It's not a very efficient way of doing it, though, because if you're going to have the bat rate as always being 20%, and by the way, this still isn't how I would add VAT onto an invoice, so don't use this method as a way of adding VAT onto an invoice. It's just to kind of demonstrate the concept. Um, I would have some way of having variable VAT rates, and we'll cover that in a, in a future episode. But I'm just purely working on the assumption that you always charge 20% VAT no matter what. So let me just get rid of that. So what we want to do is tell this formula to also refer to that. So we could do equals that. Well, that means you're going to have to go through every formula line by line to tell it to refer to that box. That's no good. So now we're saying J3, that one's J3, that one's J3. OK, well, what if we want to do that in a slightly more automated way? Well, the way that you do it is you use what's known as an absolute cell reference. And to do an absolute cell reference, all you do is you put a dollar sign in front of the row and the column. In this example, you actually don't need to put the dollar sign in front of the column and row reference. It's only the row reference that needs to have the dollar sign in front of it. So you could get away with not putting it before the J and this will still work. Let me show you what this is going to do. So let me just grab that, copy it down, and look. The formula hasn't updated itself. 
because in this instance, the dollar sign is locking the row reference. So we're saying don't increment the row every time you copy this formula down. Now, I prefer to get into the good habit of locking the column and row reference. So if I'm going to be doing absolute formulas, I generally put a dollar in front of both. In this situation, it's not going to make any difference. Look, let me just copy this down. But what it does change is if you copied the column to the right. So in this example, it's a bit of a bad example. Let me just take these three and copy to the right. And you'll see that now every single one of these refers to $J, $3. So no matter what, we are referring to that cell. Let me just undo. If I now change this so that we don't lock the column, so I'm going to just take the absolute cell reference out before the J, copy this down. You can see that's worked as expected. But now if I copy this to the right, what do you think is going to happen? We're getting zero because we haven't locked the column. The column's now turned into K. It's now referring to this column over here because we didn't lock the column reference. So just watch out for that. It, it doesn't really apply in this example, but there are situations definitely where you're going to make reference to one cell and one cell only. And whether you copy your formula to the right or you copy the formula down, you're going to want to make sure it's always referring to just that cell. And that's how you do it. So as I say, let me just undo. I like to put the absolute cell reference, so the dollar sign, I like to put it in front of the column and row reference. Um, there are situations where you might not want to do that, but I try to get into the habit. If I'm going to be making an absolute cell reference like this, I prefer to always put the dollar sign in front of the column and row. And then you know that it's no matter what you do with that formula, it's only ever going to refer to this cell here. And what I would probably do is I would actually put that on a separate sheet um, just so there's no risk then that you're going to accidentally print it out or something. So let me just show you how to do that. I would make a separate sheet and call it VAT rates. We'll call this sheet invoice. And over here, we'll have a little, make a little table. So I would make a little table like that. I'm not even going to talk about how to pick different rates from a table in today's episode. That's getting a little bit too complicated for absolute beginner stuff, but I'm, I will cover that in a later episode. For now, all I would do is for the bat rate, instead of referring to this cell over here, I'm just going to do equals and I'm going to refer to this cell here. Enter. I can now get rid of that. I'm just going to delete the whole column. Delete. So you can see there I'm referring to the sheet, the VAT rates sheet. I briefly talked about that in part one. And I'm going to put an absolute cell reference to C4. So I'm going to put a dollar in front of the C and a dollar in front of the 4. And now when I copy this formula down, we're getting the 20% VAT rate in each of those. I'll just update the design charge. And what did we have for delivery? £20, I can't remember. And that's it. And then you would maybe put a total at the bottom here. You know how to do totals. We talked about that in part one. I'll just do an auto sum. Yep, auto sum there. We'll make that bold so it's obvious what's going on. And then I'll add a total, including VAT at the bottom here. Total ink. That and that would be equals that plus that. And there, done. Align that to the right, make that bold, put some little lines under it. There we go, done. 
I'll upload this spreadsheet onto my Patreon if anyone wants to have a play around with this at home. If you're already on my Patreon, you can download it. If not, it's, you know how to make it yourself. But if you want to play with this actual spreadsheet, I'll put it on my Patreon. But that's it for today. Please post any questions in the comments. As usual, if you've got any kind of more intermediate level kind of Excel spreadsheet -y type questions, please post those in the comments as well. I don't want to get too heavy on like really complicated stuff in Excel. Uh, someone did ask the question, if you're doing invoices in Excel, how can you get it to automatically increment the invoice number for every spreadsheet? In all honesty, if you're generating that many invoices, then I think you need to be using something a bit more than Excel. Excel's great if you're only doing maybe kind of five a month or something, five, five or 10 invoices a month, absolute max, in which case it's easy enough to increment the invoice number manually. Um, there are ways and means of doing it, but in all honesty, if you're doing that many invoices, I would suggest you use some proper accounting software. This is where you start to hit limitations of what you can easily do in Excel and it starts to become easier to use a, a dedicated package. But most very small businesses aren't generating that many invoices, so you, it's easy enough to just increment the invoice number manually. Anyway, but if any questions like that, great question, uh, please fire ahead in the comments and I'll do my best to uh, show you on the next video. I hope you found that useful. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. Take care, folks. Stay safe, and I shall see you next time.